The Banu Nadir Arabic, w al Hebrew, Bani Enz Yir were a Jewish tribe who lived in northern Arabia until the 7th century at the oasis of Medina. The tribe challenged Muhammad as the leader of Medina, planned along with allied nomads to attack Muhammad and were expelled from Medina as a result. The Banu Nadir then planned the Battle of the Trench together with the Quraysh. They later participated in the Battle of Khaybar. Early history In early Medina, in addition to the Banu Nadir, there were two other major Arab tribes, the Banu Qurayza and the Banu Kanaka. They were joined earlier by two Jewish Arab tribes from Yemen, Banu Aus and Khazraj. Like other Medinese Jews, Banu Nadir bore Arabic names, but spoke a distinct dialect of Arabic. They earned their living through agriculture, money lending, and trade in weapons and jewels, maintaining commercial relations with Arab merchants of Mecca. Their fortresses were located half a day's march to the south of Medina. Banu Nadir were wealthy and lived in some of the best lands in Medina. <laughs> Tribal warfare When the two Arabian tribes of Oz and Khazraj went to war against each other in the Battle of Buath in 617, the three Jewish tribes split on different sides of the war. The Banu Nadir, led by Qab ibn al-Ashraf and Hayy ibn Aktab, and the Banu Qurayza fought with the Aus, while the Banu Kanaka were allied with the tribe of Khazraj. The latter were defeated after a long and arduous battle. Topic: <laughs> Arrival of Muhammad Muhammad was invited to Medina to broker a peace between the warring tribes, and in September 622 he arrived with a group of his followers, who were given shelter by members of the indigenous community known as the Ansar. Amongst his first actions were the construction of the first mosque in Medina, as well as obtaining residence with Abu Ayyub al-Ansari. He then set about the establishment of a pact, known as the Constitution of Medina, between the Muslims, the Ansar, and the various Jewish tribes of Medina to regulate the matters of governance of the city, as well as the extent and nature of inter-community relations. The conditions of the pact included boycotting Quraysh, abstinence from extending any support to them, assistance of one another if attacked by a third party, as well as defending Medina, in case of a foreign attack. Topic. Reaction to the expulsion of the Banu Kanaka When Muhammad expelled the Jewish tribe of the Banu Kanaka, the Banu Nadir did not get involved, viewing the conflict as another example of tribal struggle. The conflict led to a ruling that such future action by any of the other parties under the constitution of Medina would constitute avoiding of their benefits under the system. Topic. Assassination of Qab ibn al-Ashraf After the Battle of Badr, one of the Banu Nadir's chiefs Qab ibn al-Ashraf, went to the Quraysh in order to lament the loss at Badr and to incite them to take up arms to regain lost honor, noting the statement of Muhammad. He Cobb, has openly assumed enmity to us and speaks evil of us and he has gone over to the polytheists who were at war with Muslims and has made them gather against us for fighting. This was in contravention of the constitution of Medina, of which the tribe led by Qab ibn al-Ashraf was a signatory, which prohibited them from extending any support to the tribes of Mecca, namely Quraysh. Some sources suggest that during his visit to Mecca, Qab concluded a treaty with Abu Sufyan, stipulating cooperation between the Quraysh and Jews against Muhammad. Other historians cite that Qab ibn al-Ashraf, who was also a gifted poet, wrote a poetic eulogy commemorating the slain Quraysh notables. Later, he also wrote erotic poetry about Muslim women, which the Muslims found offensive. This poetry influenced so many that this too was considered directly against the constitution of Medina which states, Loyalty gives protection against treachery and this document will not be employed to protect one who is unjust or commits a crime Muhammad called upon his followers to kill Qab. Muhammad ibn Maslama offered his services, collecting four others. By pretending to have turned against Muhammad, Muhammad ibn Maslama and the others enticed Qab out of his fortress on a moonlit night, and killed him in spite of his vigorous resistance. Some attribute this action to norms of the Arab society that demand retaliation for a slight to a group's honor. The Jews were terrified at his assassination, and as the historian ibn Ishaq put it,
There was not a Jew who did not fear for his life. Topic: Expulsion from Medina. After defeat by the Quraysh at the Mount Uhud in March 625, the Banu Nadir challenged Muhammad as the leader of Medina. In July of the same year, two men were killed during skirmish in which the Muslims were involved. As a result, Muhammad went to the Nadir, asking them to make a contribution towards the blood money of two men killed. Initially most of the Nadir, except Hayy ibn Aktab, were inclined to accept Muhammad's request. However, Ibn Ubay communicated to Ibn Aktab of his intent, along with allied nomads, to attack Muhammad. The Nadir, then postponed the contribution until later that day. Muhammad left the locality immediately accusing the Banu Nadir of plotting to assassinate him, saying to have learned this either through revelation or Muhammad ibn Mislama. According to other sources, the Banu Nadir invited Muhammad to their habitations for a religious debate, to which Muhammad accepted. Muhammad also accepted the condition that he bring no more than three men with him. On his way he was notified by a Banu Nadir convert to Islam of an assassination attempt at the debate. Muhammad besieged the Banu Nadir. He ordered them to surrender their property and leave Medina within ten days. The tribe at first decided to comply, but certain people of Medina who were not believers of Muhammad sent a message to the Banu al-Nadir, saying, Hold out, and defend yourselves, we shall not surrender you to Muhammad. If you are attacked we shall fight with you and if you are sent away we shall go with you." Hayy ibn Aktab decided to put up resistance, hoping also for help from the Banu Qurayza, despite opposition within the tribe. The Nadir were forced to surrender after the siege had lasted for 14 days, when the promised help failed to materialize and when Muhammad ordered the burning and felling of their palm trees. Under the conditions of surrender, the Banu Nadir could only take with them what they could carry on camels with the exception of weapons. The Banu Nadir left on 600 camels, parading through Medina to the music of pipes and tambourines. Al Waqidi described their impressive farewell. Their women were decked out in litters wearing silk, brocade, velvet, and fine red and green silk. People lined up to gape at them. Most of Banu Nadir found refuge among the Jews of Kabar, while others emigrated to Syria. According to Ibn Ishaq, the chiefs of Nadir who went to Kabar were Salam b. Abul Hukaik, Kenana ibn al-Rabi and Hayy b. Aktab. When these chiefs arrived in Kabar, the Jewish inhabitants of Kabar became subject to them. Muhammad divided their land between his companions who had emigrated with him from Mecca. Until then, the emigrants had to rely upon the Medinese sympathizers for financial assistance. Muhammad reserved a share of the seized land for himself, which also made him financially independent. Upon expulsion of the Banu Nadir, Muhammad is said to have received a revelation of the Surah al Hashir. <laughs> <laughs> Battle of Trench, 627 A number of Jews who had formed a party against Muhammad, including Salam b. Abul Hukaik, Kenana ibn al Rabi, and Hayy b. Aktab, the chiefs of Nadir who had gone to Kabar, together with two chiefs from the tribe of Biwaili went to Quraysh and invited them to form a coalition against Muhammad so that they might get rid of him altogether. Then they persuaded the tribe of Giftan to join the battle against Muhammad. Banu Nadir promised half the date harvest of Kabar to nomadic tribes if they would join the battle against Muslims. Abu Sufyan, the military leader of Quraysh, with the financial help of Banu Nadir had mustered a force of size 10,000 men. Muhammad was able to prepare a force of about 3,000 men. He had, however, adopted a new form of defense, unknown in Arabia at that time. Muslims had dug a trench wherever Medina lay open to cavalry attack. The idea is credited to a Persian convert to Islam, Salman the Persian. The siege of Medina began on March 31, 627, and lasted for two weeks. Abu Sufyan's troops were unprepared for the fortifications they were confronted with, and after an ineffectual siege lasting several weeks, the coalition decided to go home. The Quran discusses this battle in verses Quran 33-9-33-27. Battle of Kabar, 628 In 628, Muhammad attacked Kabar. Later, Muhammad sent a delegation under Abdullah bin Rawaha to ask another chief of the Banu Nadir Usayr Usair ibn Zaram, to come to Medina along with other Nadir leaders to discuss the two groups' political relations. 
among whom were Abdullah bin Unais, an ally of Banu Salima, a clan hostile to the Jews. When they came to him they spoke to him and treated him saying that if he would come to Muhammad he would give him an appointment and honor him. They kept on at him until he went with them with a number of Jews. Abdullah bin Unais mounted him on his beast until when he was in al karkara about six miles from Kabar, al Yusair changed his mind about going with them. Abdullah perceived his intention as he was preparing to draw his sword so he rushed at him and struck him with his sword cutting off his leg. al Yusair hit him with a stick of shahat wood which he had in his hand and wounded his head. All Muhammad's emissaries fell upon the thirty Jewish companions and killed them except one man who escaped on his feet. Abdullah bin Unais is the assassin who volunteered and got permission to kill Banu Nadir's Salam ibn Abu al-Hukaik at a previous night mission in Kabar. Muhammad and his followers attacked Kabar in May, June 628 after the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Although the Jews put up fierce resistance, the lack of central command and preparation for an extended siege sealed the outcome of the battle in favor of the Muslims. When all but two fortresses were captured, the Jews negotiated their surrender. The terms required them to hand over one half of the annual produce to the Muslims, while the land itself became the collective property of the Muslim state. See also Banu Kanika Safiya bin Hayyai Constitution of Medina Jihad Itmam al huja Topic. References. Topic. External links. Muhammad and the Jews of Medina.